Hey, just carrot. How are you? Live now. You are the first one here. Like you knew. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, you can come in. Come in. I'm streaming now. Just say no. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm streaming, so yeah. <laughs> How is everyone doing today? Twenty two games finished today? Holy crap. So many games. Hello, Sudocom. Woke up because of fireworks. That sucks. Go back to sleep. <laughs> One forty AM, holy crap. Looking for a game to review. Hello, everyone. Does anyone have a game that they want to go over? See, I've done I, last week. I did electro on exchanges. I'm trying to think of what I should do electro on this time. What do you guys think? Um, valuable moves, wasting moves. Hello, Zaylin sixty four. It's the most. It's one of the most common mistakes made by cues is they waste moves. Or they play negative value moves. <laughs> uh, it's on my YouTube. It's on my YouTube channel. Just go do youtube.com slash Clausius. <laughs> well, I haven't made, I haven't done teaching games this week yet, and it's like Thursday. I've been playing games all week. Well, for stream, I've been playing. I haven't taught much. Uh, I did. I think I did yours, Eric. I've looked at yours several times before. I'd like to give someone else a chance. It's going all right, Zaylin sixty four. We are looking for a game to go over. We're going to teach today. Can I get a banner? See you above my head. What? What are you talking about? Oh, you're a three don. <laughs> uh, 
Well, how many games have you played? Should I just look at your profile? Like, let everyone stalk you on Twitch? How many games have you played as 3Don? Probably none, and by probably I mean definitely. <laughs> well, while we're waiting on a game, let's go ahead and get uh, some heisty going. Uh, yeah, Zaylin, that'll work. That'll work. Send me a link. Start heist. Heist 100. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and review this game. Okay, so we have a 16Q and a 17Q. Now we're gonna see how many moves. Uh, let's let's take uh, let's make some bets. All right. Uh, how many wasted moves? And by wasted, I mean zero point or negative point moves. Are we gonna find in this game? So let's do start bet. Uh, Start bet. How do I do it again? I forget. Uh, start bets. Uh, less, uh, less than 10. Oh, no. Less than 10. Greater than 10. Greater than 20. Greater than 30. Greater than 40. And greater than 50. Did I do it right? No, I didn't do it right. How do I do it? Let's see, commands, start bet. How do I freaking do it? Start bet. Stop command, start bet. I don't freaking know how to do it. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, anyway, write down in the comments. Uh, how many do you think we'll find? 
I'm going to say... Hey, I got a banner. Cool. I'm going to say... 25 to 30. Let's see. At this level, probably 25 to 30. So we are going to try to find how many wasted moves are in our games. And so at this level, we're at 16Q and 17Q. So how many wasted moves? So let's go ahead and look. And uh, we are just going to... I'm going to go ahead and uh, use a disclaimer. We're doing this for funsies as well as a lecture. But it's gonna it's for fun. So don't feel bad if we're laughing at you, Zaylin, uh, or we're making jokes about moves. Don't worry about it. It's all fun and games, and we're all just learning. Uh, and we all play bad moves too. So uh, don't don't take our jokes too too personally. All right. So here we go. If it's Ting, and I swear it's gonna add to it. I was like, if he played Ting on the first move, then that's one. <laughs> All right, so help me keep track, guys. Uh, I want to keep track of the number. All right, so we are going to talk about how many moves do you waste. And this, what we're going to learn from this is when you review your games, try to look how many moves you waste that are zero point or negative point values or moves that could be very, very uh, slow that need to be better or more active. And critically analyze your own games and try to find these moves in your games as well because likely, I think everyone does it, the, so you can improve your game by probably a couple of ranks just by trying to fix this. All right, all right. Uh oh, that's strange. You don't want to make a base, but it's still trying to make a base, so it's fine. All right, so here's White trying to surround a living group. So there's one uh, because this could easily be better here. Where you're making points instead of you know trying to surround a living group. All right, so there's one. Uh, black plays Tanuki, but Black, you have a weak group. You should probably extend that. Uh, oh, do you want to count just for Black? I was counting both. I was counting both. That's why I was like 25 to 30. I like how uh, White made a mistake in Joseki. Like, there's pushes and uh, cuts here. And Bill Black's just like, no, 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 no. You fix that cut. And White's like, all right, I'll revert it back to Joseki since you're being so nice about it. And then Black's like, okay, now I'm going to peep that cut, so you fix that cut. White says, okay, but I'm going to slap you while I do it. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, Tiger's Mouth would be better to fix. Well, right now we're only at one, so it's pretty easy. So you're doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. There's a, we're not going over the, the best moves or anything. We're just trying to see how many moves are not doing anything. This move's almost not doing anything. Actually, this white move. Would you say this is a negative value move? I would say... Hello, Morganall. I would say this white move is a negative value move. The reason being is because this white move kind of makes black make a base, right? So let's just say something like right here. So this white's move gets maybe one point in the center for like six points on the side. Right? He's already got a stun in the center, so it's not killing a lot of Moyo. So I want to say this white move is two, because it forces a bad exchange, which is clearly not good for white. All right, so there's two. So black, uh, this is almost nothing move, but it still helps your weak group, so it's not nothing, not quite nothing. Uh, three, they're all whites, though. Push from behind on this fifth, sixth line. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. <laughs> so, four, five. <laughs> this is definitely a nothing move. <laughs> the empty triangle. Five. All right, Black's doing great. Oh, the go problem. Um, so we have five, and they're all whites. Six, because this is like one point so it's practically nothing 
Uh, seven because it's the wall. Oh. This doesn't do anything. At best, they can get an Atari, but it's still it still pretty much doesn't do anything. Like, why well, can ignore this and you've gained what one point? So, so first one for black. All right. So what I'm at? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven. Am I at seven? Is that right? I forgot what I'm at. So I'm at seven, I guess. Yeah, seven. Six white, one black. All right, uh, so white defends the one point, so eight. Nine, 10. This is still, these are all one point moves. They're so, so small at this stage. So we're, have, we're at 10 and 40 moves. So at 16Q and 17Q, within your first 40 moves, you have a one in four chance to play a nothing move. That's almost Dame. So you have a 25% chance that your moves are nothing. <laughs> okay, so so far, we're, we're seeing in the first 40 moves, we've found 10, 11, 12. I, any move in this area, I'm just going to count because this there's no value in, the, in this area right now. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, now we have a two and five chance. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll say that I'll say 19 because this one actually does something. Um, so this area is actually some points, so it is some value. It's just not the greatest move. So I'll say 19. Let's say 19. Uh. I'll be generous and not count this. Okay, I'm counting this. I already was generous once. 20. All right, so black's getting something. 21. 22. Okay, so now we're both getting something in the center. Uh, da -da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da. Okay, black's clearly getting more. Okay, there we go. 23. Because that cut didn't work. And if you're going to fix it, you want to fix it from this side. Um, you, need it, you don't have to, though. Like, yes, there's some end game, I guess. But there's only reduction there. Okay, I'll give it I'll give it to you. Just because this this level, I guess, that's difficult. But uh, so what? 24? I'll give you... I'll give you that one. Ooh, a negative point move. There we go. 25. Because that's inside your own area. You were supposed to expand your area, not play inside your own area. Yeah, right side's kind of huge. Uh, this is going to die. So 26. Uh, this Atari's fine because it's free, but if you follow up on it... There we go. 27. 28. There we go. 29. 30. There we go. We're, we're at 30 moves that have not been any value for uh, these guys for in 79 moves. We're already at 30. I was saying 25 to 30, so I've already uh, lost my score. All right, so now let's take some rebets. Now that we know, <laughs> now that we know what to expect, what are some uh, what are some retakes on the those estimates? Because <laughs> we're at 30 out of 79. So I'm gonna say, uh, let's say 70. <laughs> let's say 70 moves. Because I'm at 30 out of 79. Oh, I I have made fun of myself. We can do that if you guys want. After this, we can go over one of my double digit Q games. Because uh, I find that quite fun to look at my double digit Q games. So we can laugh at me next. We'll do that next. All right, so we're at uh, 30. Um, okay. Careful. Gotta be careful. <laughs> what? <laughs> 31. This move doesn't do anything. It doesn't gain liberties. 
Okay, it gains one liberty, but you're already alive. Black's already dead on the inside. You already have more liberties. Hello, bug kitten. So we're trying to find how many wasted moves are in this game. We're at 31. Okay, that gets... Ugh. This gets something. This gets something, just not that much. Alright. Uh, that's barely something. We're playing in game. Uh, let's say 32, because this is one stone. It's not important. So 32, 33. Okay. Uh-oh. All right, double-digit cues in the chat. Can you spot the Tsuji? So we're going to take a short timeout right here. All right, double-digit cues. Get your game on. Trying to find that Tsuji. It is Tsuji Thursdays now. Find the Tsuji. All double digit cues watching. Try to see what you can do. Black made a mistake. Remember that number 32, though. We're at 32. Uh, 06. Not quite 06. Close. Very close. Q7, yes. You play Q7. And I can't connect. Because if I connect, then you play O6, and black is dead. Uh, yeah, it'd be a co, but it's really bad. There's no reason to have this. Like, it's not worth it. So yeah, you could make a co, Morgan all, but I'm just trying to point out there's liberty problems. So just go here. Co's are also co's are so single digit Q. Uh, all right, so we're at 32, 33. Okay, that's good. Oh, there it is. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> what do you know? I guess White spotted that to Suji. Uh, so I'm going to call that... I'm going to say the Tiger's Mouth is 34 because this happened. Or at least the connection's 34. Because you have to at least connect and give up one stone. So, okay, 34. Okay, there we go. There's a big move. Toot, toot. Uh, Zio, I'll teach you something very interesting and very cool. That is, when you are completely surrounding this quarter of the board, go here. This is a good way to steal the eyes when he, White has nowhere to run. So when you have the Great Wall of China around the star point, Seriously, when China's surrounding, like, the planet, the star point, the star, imagine the Great Wall of China around the freaking sun, like, in every direction or something. I don't know. Just imagine it. That sun's not going to go anywhere. So remember that S15 is a really good move against a 3-3 invasion when you have the Great Wall of China around that star. Because the eye space is very small on the inside, and white has nowhere to run. So, remember the Great Wall. Because the eye space is very small. Oh, crap. What were, the, what were we at? What were we at? Like, 34, 35? I don't... What was the number? What was the number? What was the number? It was like 30-something. Was it 35? 36? 36! Okay, I'm gonna go with 36. I think it was 36, but I wasn't sure. Alright, 36. Uh, well, that doesn't keep your opponent surrounded. It's just gonna let them in your points, so 37. Because you're supposed to surround the corner or try to kill the corner. So, 37. Is this connection? Uh, 
Avoid these descending down moves. They're really bad. Just so you know. Uh, 38. Because you can simply block. Block, darn you! Darn you, lag! Ah, my arch nemesis, lag. Lag has beat me so many times, you can go. Go back. I want to click... Oh, I have a pen. Ha, it's not lag. It's stupidity. And I swear, stupidity has cost me more games than lag. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it's stupidity, guys. My other arch nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is much better. <laughs> uh, yeah, so 37. Uh, that, that's a... That's a classy fail. Okay. So we're at 37. <laughs> if my opponent can do it, I can do it. But guess what? <laughs> you can't. Oh, I guess you can. Shows what I know. Oh, but you're going to kill yourself. Okay, that's cool. We can do that. Uh, the shape is here. Because of your opponent, Hanes, then you can Atari. Right? And then if he connects, you kill. So he has to play this move. And then you can reduce. And then he Ataris. And then later, in Yose, aka now... Uh, you can play this Atari. If he goes down, you connect and he's dead. So he can't do that. And so you can capture. And then you play this Atari. And ta-da! You steal the corner! Alright, that's an important shape to remember. I highly recommend memorizing that. Hello, Behiden. Alright, so 38. We are at 38. 39! Because screw cutting off those stones and killing them, we're just gonna let them escape. 39. Okay. Cool. No, no, no. This is 40. Because you could easily fix the cut by blocking here. Now there's no cut. So, 40. Alright, 40. Come on. 30 more to go until 70. Uh, 41 because you can haunt him. 42. Negative. Almost negative value move. Can you ignore that? Like, seriously, can you ignore that? Yeah, yes. Yes, you can. You can totally ignore that. 42. 43. 44. Because liberties are important. A toddy. A toddy. A toddy. A toddy. Cut. Oops. Alright, so 44. Ooh, nice. Okay. I don't think we're going to make it to 70. Stop descending. It's bad. You lose like a point. Uh, da, 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 da. Forty-five, because that's dumb, eh? Forty-six, because you missed the cut <laughs> and fixed it. Oh, nice. <laughs> Let me fix the cut before I cut you. Let's see. I'm just, let's. What's a good metaphor for that? Uh, let me let me give you like a hundred soldiers before I send my spy to go in and try to assassinate you. Is M three a thing? Uh, yes, M three is a thing. So let me let me just fix. Oh, I know. Let me. You have a big castle that has no door so like the door's gone so let me just here let me build it for you make it out of make it out of wood metal blah 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 build it like install it here's your door it's beautiful all right now i'm gonna go invade you <laughs> let me just fix everything for you and then attack you and invade you uh okay so what is that 45 uh, am i gonna do this with other games yeah i gotta go over my game next
Found your game back from 2011. <laughs> uh, don't know if that works. 46, because you fixed the cut. Stop fixing stuff before attacking stuff. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. 47, that's Gote. 48, it was Gote. 49, you're still dead. 50, he's still dead. Uh, yeah, that's fine. 51, making an eye at T1 is never a good idea when they have a stone at S2. There's no eye. There's no eye. What, what am I at? I lost count. 48? I don't know. Was it 48? Am I at? I just, I brain farted. I saw T1 and I was like, why? Or I saw S1 trying to make an eye at T1. I'm just like, why? Right, let's 48, I think. I don't know. 49. 50, because empty triangle is the way to win and li make liberties. 51, 52, 53, 50, okay, 4, okay, so I, it was over 50, so what am I at, 56 or 57? So I just added 6. So I'm at 56, 57? You said it was over 50, so it's probably like 51, so let's say 57. 58! 59! Co-threat, so 60! 61! 62! 63! Oh man, I thought we weren't going to make it to 70, guys, but now I'm pretty getting pretty confident. we still got a lot of moves to go. 64, 65... 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75. <laughs> there we go, finally. A non dom a non suicide move. I don't know. Uh, they're not even Dame. Uh. I, I don't know. I lost count again because I'm, I'm, my brain's, my brain's breaking. What is that, 80? I think it's 80. It's either 70 or 80. I think I'm at 80. Pass, darn you, pass. Oh, yeah, never mind. Yeah, that's right, never mind. Now pass. There we go. Oh, 75. Okay, so 75. So is it 75 total or 76 total? Seventy. Let's say seventy-six moves that were wasted. <laughs> moves that were wasted. Um, pretty much moves that are so much better just playing anything decent. Moves that are almost passing. <laughs> so seventy-six, I think, was to seventy-six moves. All right, so the difference between a 16Q and a 1Don, because Don's, okay, Don's usually waste maybe one or two moves at most. Uh, that's a big difference. They at least have positive value. They, they, Don's play slow moves. Don't get me wrong. Don's play slow moves. They do. But they do, all their moves do something. Yeah. Almost all of these moves do next to nothing, if not nothing, if not worse than nothing by making your opponent make more than you. So, I would say about... Zial, you're about 74 nothing moves from a one dot. So, uh, now, we had, a, we had a nice laugh out of it, but let's talk about why this happens. Let's talk about why this happens. The most common reason is actually following your opponent. Um, another common reason is over defending when you don't need to. <laughs> uh, nice, nice. Did I say did I say it wrong? Sorry for being mean. Sorry, sorry for being mean. I don't know. Um, you broke my brain. This game broke my brain. 
Anyway, um... So, uh... The most common reason is following your opponent, thanking their move Sente and responding to it. The second mo uh, another common one is over-defending, thinking there's something there when there's not, and not checking it. And then the third most common one is not as obvious, but it's very common. It's when you force your opponent to fix or make something, and you didn't get anything back in exchange, or you didn't get as much back in exchange. A very common example of that is all these pushes to the freaking center. You give your opponent fifth line territory and you're getting no influence. And then you play the empty triangle. <laughs> uh, so those are the three most common things that I want you guys to make note of. One, are you following your opponent when you play? Two, are you defending something that shouldn't be defended? And you can check that in your review. Did you defend something that didn't work or that you had a response for that you could have easily sacrificed one or two stones um, or anything like that? Are you defending something you don't need to defend? And three, are you making exchanges that are just bad for you, just blatantly bad for you? For the, that, an example of that is these pushes from behind. Because if you can, if you can fix those three things, because those are the three most common, I bet you're stronger. You can get stronger than like three Q. Now, granted, it's not only those things, because your your moves have to do something besides that. But let's just let's just say stronger than five Q. Then, if you can fix those three things, probably you can get stronger than five Q. And there's a few other things you have to work on, like attack and defense, uh, efficiency, and stuff like that. But those three things are very important. And yeah, we kind of looked at this game and laughed a bit. But how, how often do you look at your own games and look for those things? How often do you laugh at your own games? Because I look at my games and on stream, and I play my games on stream, and I get a lot of people laughing at my games on stream, and uh, true, I don't laugh at myself very much because it, it hurts on the inside. But it's still, it's still something that happens. We make moves that are clearly bad for us, but we just don't take the time to think before we play. Uh, take the time to think before you play, and when you review your games, specifically look for uh, these things when you review your games. This, that's the best time to try and find it, that's the best time to practice seeing it. Is when you review your games, look for those three things. And if you can do it a lot, if you do it a lot, then probably you'll start seeing it in your own, during the play, like during uh, your games when you're playing them. So train your eyes to see these things train your eyes to see these yes we kind of did, went out this like a joke but it's still quite a common problem that's actually why i chose to lecture on it it's a very common problem uh so when you review your games try to look for those three things and i think you could easily improve one or two ranks almost within uh almost immediately like within a week or two i think if you just practice that for a week or two for 20 games 20 or 30 games I bet you rank up one rank at least, if not two. Just by focusing on just not wasting moves. Look for those three things when you review your games, and I bet you can probably improve one rank if not two, if you're like double digit Q or weaker than 5Q. If you're stronger than 5Q, you need to do a little bit more than that, but it will still be very helpful, because 5Qs also make uh, mistakes, just not as often, right? Um, I think uh, when I counted it, I think five cues make about 15 to 20 uh, mistakes that are probably negative value. Uh, so let's say 15, I think is a good number, and then like three Q or four Q. I had a three Q student. No, I, was, I think it was a three Q or four Q student. Uh, I think it was three Q because I think he was played on multiple servers. So it was really confusing. Uh, and we counted and he made like 12 mistakes that were just blatantly not good for him and didn't matter. It was better off not being played. Yeah, don't help your opponent. Check Tanuki if you can. Always think Tanuki. This is something uh, pros always say. Always be thinking about Tanuki. If you can, do it. If you don't have if you don't have to respond, don't respond. Uh, and yeah, if you don't have to defend, why are you defending? No, this was just a. Uh, this was just. 
uh, a donated game. If you don't have to defend, why are you defending? And then definitely, definitely, definitely get rid of those moves that help your opponent. Those are not as common as the other two, but they're still pretty common. But probably they're worse than the other two <laughs> because you force your opponent to make moves better than you. Uh, you're actually making an exchange that makes your opponent better than you. So de that one's probably the most detrimental and probably like the third most common. Uh, yeah, not a problem. Um, so definitely look for those when you review your games and train your eyes to see these because they're very important and very common mistakes. Uh, and if you can fix those, I guarantee that you will be like at least a rank or two stronger within a month. Uh, misguided peeps from the crowd. What do you mean? <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Just oh, check for those things. But okay, so now let's look at another one. And we're going to do one of mine because you guys wanted to see one of mine. And we're going to absolutely obliterate my game. We're going to see how many times did I waste moves in my games and how often did I just play absolutely stupid moves. All right, so where's the link for uh, my games again on KGS? Uh, I got to go to upload game. SGF library. I lost it yet. Yeah. yeah. Oh, excuse me. I lost it yesterday when I was playing. Uh, where did that link go? There we go. Copy. Uh, it's the KGS archives. Oh, you already. That was an SGF file. Okay. That works. I thought I was going to just download something from the archives, but... Yeah, KGS uh, archives your games. So, OGS also kind of archives them. It's just, it's not as easy to get to, I guess. But you can still get them. Pictures! Uh, downloads. Where'd he go? Colossus versus Jorga. Oh, that's a two-dong game. No, I want my double-digit Q games. Yeah, that's a. I wanna. I wanna make fun of myself. 2006. There we go. All right, I'm going to get a drink real quick while this is downloading. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the Ringo game? Mm, busy. 
This is the original, like, Go Club members from my Go Club and my brother and I when we, like, first started. All right, so let's do... Let's see, we did a double digit. Let's do, like, a 12Q. No, let's just do, like, 17 No, I want to do a little bit stronger than 17 We just did 17 Uh, let's do... July. No, that's 2017. Crap. No, I don't want that. I don't want that. No! Stop it! We just did 18 games, so let's go to 12Q. January. Oh yeah, in January I played on the Plossy account. Remember that now. Plossy C games include expiring uh, crap. Include expired and guest accounts. Load darn you! We're gonna make fun of me. We're gonna make fun of me while I was a 12 kid. All right, January. There we go, 11Q. Let's do, ooh, 28 and a half, all right. And then SGF library. Upload. All right, let's see how many 12 Qs make. We have, a let's see, 16 Q has about 76, give or take. All right, help me keep track, guys. Help me keep track. Doot doot, doot doot. It's loading. What? That's a short game. That is not. Is that the game I chose? Ah, oh, did I click on the wrong one? Monis. What game is this one? That's a 2Q game. I don't even know how I clicked on that one. Oh, it, but I don't know. I don't know. I did have the right game. I just somehow clicked on the wrong one. I mean, there's a two in it. I just want the one before the two. I 
I want, I want to KYU. Yes, DDK Madness. Would you rather be able to see 10 minutes into your own future or 10 minutes into the future about anyone but yourself? Oh, pff, obviously my own. No, you know what? Because my future would suck. So <laughs> I, I don't see how I could profit from that. But I could probably profit from 10 minutes of other people's future. So yeah, anyone but myself. Become a psychic. Make killing lots of money. Okay. So we're going to review this game. It looks like a miscount. Because something's not done. I don't know. I considered lottery, but it's really hard to control the lottery. Even if you could see uh, 10 minutes in the future. Okay, Classy 12Q. Let's do it. That opening that I played for two years straight, there it is. All right. Mm -hmm. Ooh, fast paced Classy. Really fast paced Classy. Chicken. Oh my gosh, stop playing. There, That's super small. Do I want to count that one? Yeah, let's count that one. One. Ooh, another weak group. Good thing we're not counting weak groups this game. What the crap does that do? I don't even know what it does. Okay. I'm trying to surround him, apparently. Um. Let's say. No, I'm still surrounding him. Dang it. Like, I'm doing something, I'm just doing it really badly. <laughs> I'm doing something, it's just really, really bad. Oh, there we go. Two. We're going to clamp and force the opponent out and help the opponent escape. All right. Oh, three, because our opponent didn't escape. <laughs> Four, because we're like, no, you're escaping, darn you. Get you out there. Okay. Living. Whatever. Uh, five. No one wants to play J14. There we go. But now it's doesn't really do anything. Does it? Six. This one's definitely stupid. Uh, seven because you're already out. Eight. That's really small. There we go, now we're back on track. Ooh, yay, just like your shapes. What the carbuncle is this? 
Nine. Oh my gosh. Ten, you want to run away. Running with the knight's move. Dude, I am like the bravest guy ever as a 12Q. I'm like the bravest 12Q ever. Um... Is that 11? Am I at 11? Because this one doesn't help me, doesn't hurt him. So 11. 12. 13. 14. 15. Ooh, a peep. Uh, 16, nice, there we go, there's a nice move, how am I winning this game, running with the knight's move, not the greatest, but at least you're doing something. Uh, actually, I defended my center, didn't I? Am I at 18 or 19 now? God, I, oh my gosh, I'm losing track. I am really bad with keeping track of this number. I need to write it down. I need to write it down. We're going to write it down. I'm going to write it down in the chat. Let's say 19 now. Because I'm really bad at keeping track of this number. So I'm going to say 19. And I'm just going to have it written down there. Okay, that is something. 20, because that is nothing. Uh, that kind of defends a weak group. 21. Okay, let's write 21. 21. 22, 23. I need like a puncture. Puncture the clock clicky thingy that goes one, two, three. Wait, 23, 24. Wait, what did he play? 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. That's an Atari. Still small, so 31, 32. Uh, the move that doesn't work, so 33. That's just bad reading. It's fine. 34, because you don't fix an Atari, obviously. Uh, okay. Okay. 35, because that defends the cut in the worst way possible. All right, so now I'm at 35. Now I'm at 35. Okay. 36. That gum it right as I wrote it down. 36. 37. You already defended the cut. The cut. In a weird way. 38. 39. That's dummy. 40. That's two points. There you go. It's not how you defend the points. 41. 42. There you go. 43. 44. 45. 46. 47. 48. Oh, we got to get those Dame center moves. It's the best moves ever. 49. 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58. Stop playing in the center, I swear to goodness. 
59. Lag. 60. 60, oh my god. Just cut the stones, I swear. That's fixes us. There you go. There you go. There you go. Keep playing good moves. Keep playing good moves. Just make them do something and they're good. Okay. No, that's 62. Okay. Oh my gosh, the lag. That's all you say. Uh, at least it's something. It's really slow. What the fudge is this? 63! Losing a point. Oh my gosh. 64, 65. Stop playing in the center, I swear. 66. 67. I hope the center dies. 60, that's 67. 68. Oh my gosh, 69. <laughs> Kill yourself, why don't you? 70. Okay. 71. 72. It's Gote, but at least it does something. Uh. 70. Okay. 72. I'm not 72. One point. At least it's positive value. 72. 73. No, this is a bad end game. 74. Let's say 74. Yeah, that fixes. Fine. Yay! End game again. K13 isn't a wasted move. Oh, did it count K13? Sorry. Uh, so 73. 73. M7. Come on. 74. Uh, 75. 76. 77. 78. 79. No, no, no. 78. 78. Because I counted HC2. 78. 79 because it was an Atari. Okay, co threat. Alright, monkey jump. Miss monkey jump. And we're at 79. Okay. 79, we got 79. Do I hear 80? Do I hear 80? Do I hear 80? Come on, 80. We may be overcounting in game. I may be getting too fancy with it. But I'm just proving a point. <laughs> uh da 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 So basically double digit cues make more than 70 moves that are really really slow or bad like that one and that is 80 now we are at 80 i didn't think we'd make it guys did not think we'd make it Okay, at least the end game's nice. It's accurate. <laughs> oh my god. 81! <laughs> we have to throw that last one in there. 
Oh, and White's like, here, let me help you make up for that. And Black's like, no, I'm, I'm going to lose a point. And he's like, no, let me make you make up for that. And I'm just like, no, no, we are, I'm losing a point. But do I just miss an Atari? Don't you let him live, I swear to goodness. Don't you let him live. There we go. Oh man, that was that was terrifying. Didn't know if I was gonna live or not. Eighty one wasted moves. Eighty one wasted moves. Uh, Fiala may have been right. I may have, this game I may have been a little bit harsher on the end game. Still, it's like seventy moves though, at least. And those are moves that are like getting nothing, almost nothing. Oh, eighty-two. Yeah, sorry. Um, I am noticing though that a lot of the wasted moves. Come on, Pin. Oh, now you want to load. A lot of the waste of moves. Look, a triangle! Because lag makes triangles. Okay, I'm going to delete that. Because that's not what I was going for. I was going for a circle and somehow made like some octagonal triangle thing. How many moves are in this center? And how many points are in that center? Yes. They were determined to have a near zero point center. So if we consider this center as Dame, how many stones did they play in the center? At least 20, right? There's at least 20 stones in the center that have no value. At least three. Oh, points. There's almost no points. I mean, there is some points, but when these were being played, these are like one or two or maybe three points at most. But when these were being played, there was like 10 point moves on the board. Like 10 to 15 point moves on the board. So there's like 20 moves in the center that could have been ignored and played somewhere else. So it looks like a lot of the moves that are being wasted are moves that are near almost Dame in the center. So there's no Moyo in the center, don't play in the center. It may help your game a lot. Because if you can avoid the center, then you may have it. The center is Dame if there's no Moyo. If there's both black and white stones like facing the center, the center is Dame. There's no point to play in the center. It can be reduced, it can be destroyed. It, even if you make it, it can be, it will be very small compared to the edges. Apparently, Classy 12Q wasted more moves than a 16Q. What would I have done differently? All right, so let, we're going to turn this into a real review. All right, so let's turn this to a real review. All right, Classy. It's time to get the Classy approach slapped into you. All right, when you have a weak group, you don't tanuki, you defend it. So make a base. Okay, this is gonna be really hard if there's lag. <laughs> Send them to the street. Uh, you know, I would find it super helpful too if the freaking lag would let me place my stone. 
let me review, teach you guys stuff, but no. It wants to lag. It's because I'm streaming. I have the pin again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Screw the lag. I have stupidity. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Blames it on lag. Really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh man I'm a double digit Q streamer <laughs> oh my gosh okay make the base place the stone don't blame it on lag and stop clicking the pin you don't draw on the go board you place the stones on the go board and then you try to make a base that's how you're supposed to play go <laughs> you play go with go stones not with the pin <laughs> oh man. Okay, don't tenugui groups. It's a lesson there. I'm not sure if this would make a horrible video or a hilarious video. Uh, when you extend to Shamara, you want to extend the, uh, as far as you can, and also the top side's bigger than the right side, and also weak groups first. About that base. <laughs> uh, I mean it's not the best base but it has some eyes uh, I would use a knight not a large knight what are you talking about oh do you mean this one? A knight's move here is too slow. Because it's not as far as the large knights, and you're, it's not as any better eyes, because you still have the monkey jump to worry about. But at the same time, this is better than jumping, because it also creates Aji at h3, and it also does make some eye space. So it's not, it's not alive yet, but it's some eye space. It's making some eye space and then running away. It's much better than just ignoring it and letting yourself die. Uh, but anyway, this is slow. That's not as big as the top side. And also not urgent. Because the urgent stuff on the bottom. But no one cares about the bottom. Screw urgency. Uh, top side's much bigger than the left side. Um, then play it. If you're scared of the large knight's move... Play the large knight's move and learn what's good about it and what's bad about it. You're always going to be uncomfortable with it until you play it. So you know how they tell you when you're wanting to talk to your girl, when you're in high school or middle school or whatever, you're wanting to talk to that girl. You think she's really cute, but you just really are scared to do it. And then you know you when you speak to her, you're going to be very awkward. Well, guess what? You're never going to not be awkward talking to girls until you start talking to freaking girls. You gotta go talk to the girl. You gotta go fail a few times. You gotta go be creepy. You gotta be the creepy guy before you can be the cool guy. Uh, that's just guy logic. So you gotta talk to a few girls. Get comfortable with them. Know they're human beings just like you. They're not some foreign alien species that were here to rule us. Uh, no, they're here just like we are. And they get scared of boys just like boys get scared of girls. You gotta go talk to them. You gotta build up that, you know, comfortability. So you gotta, you gotta treat the large knights move like it's a girl. Just got to get comfortable with her and start talking to her. Learn what she likes, learn what she dislikes. That's the best way to handle it. And I got to say, that is the best metaphor I've ever come up with ever because I find, I think it's hilarious. I think that's the best metaphor I've ever used. <laughs> yes, ask the large knights move out to the movies. <laughs> um, okay, so that jump, it's not as big as the top side. <laughs> kind of build more value before you talk to the girls <laughs> uh yeah don't don't make so many weak groups this is another weak group still not defending the weak groups and still not playing the big top open side just another weak group <laughs> Gee, the dog starts moving Uh-huh, I got one, I got one, I got one. Uh, hello, Steven. Add quote, Clausius, you have to tr tr 
treat shapes like girls. Learn what they like and dislike. <laughs> you gotta treat shapes like girls. Learn what they like and dislike. Uh, okay, so now we finally get the top side. So the top side's finally getting played. And instead of pushing him towards the thickness, you push him away from the thickness. No, that's wrong. You gotta push the weak group towards the thickness. <laughs> yeah, you gotta give him attention. Uh... And I would say your weak stones are probably like your girlfriends. If you ignore them, they'll kill you. Weak stones are like your girlfriends. If you ignore your weak stones and you ignore your girlfriends, they kill you. Uh, and you'll die. <laughs> to your face, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is trying to surround the weight group, but the shape here is actually a shoulder hit and a jump back. Or mid, whatever you whatever you, floats your boat. How do you apply the slide of thinking to thinking under a skirt? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, well, this is... I don't think this is going to be turned into a video. I think this is for you guys only. This probably would not last very long on YouTube. <laughs> or maybe I'll do it and be able to just title it, like, the funniest, like, game commentary ever. <laughs> How do you apply this line of thinking to peeking under a skirt? Anyway, this is the best way to... This is like the most non-review review, but it's hilarious. Oh, man. Uh, you want a combination with your stones. So stay connected, and then push them out, and then surround them. Dude. And when they touch, you want to consider the Hane first. You want to surround when they touch Yahane. It's like when someone punches you, you punch them back. When someone touches you, Yohane, you bend around them. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> let's let's change that. Uh, when you get touched, you bend around. Uh, no, I'm not following that train of thought. So let's just say when you when someone plays a touching move, Yahane. I'm not gonna follow that train of thought. Uh, when you say pushing to thickness is just like hunting. <laughs> I need some manners. Um, yeah, I need I need to start going backing up on the metaphors a little bit. Got a little out of control there. Okay, yep, they try to cut. Atari, yep. And even still, you don't even have to fix. Just block. Surround the weak groups. When you're trying to capture a tiger or trying to capture an animal, you want to surround it and block off its escape routes. Because that thing's freaking faster than you are. You ain't going to catch it if you're chasing it. Your opponent's weak groups are like a cheetah. You ain't gonna catch it by chasing it. You have to surround it and trap it. Uh, this move is stupid, and don't play it. Um, urgent moves before big moves. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta stop that non-existent like thickness right there. Got to build that non-existent moyo right there. There we go. Now we're on to the uh, urgent. Make base. Yep, yep. Uh, I might Atari here. And then go here. Play taking its rounds everything. Uh, just because that Hane. Because if I just go here... There's not really a response to the Hane now. 
it's just cut. But if you have that stone, then you can just push it in. And then they connect, and then, yeah, you're fine. You're alive. It's, it's better than just getting cut off, I think. Uh, this knight's move does nothing, and it sucks, so don't ever play this. Play this knight's move, because it attaches, it gets you ice space on the side, and it doesn't try to live on the second line with no ice. And if you can only make one eye, it's better to run away. If you're only going to be able to make one eye, it's better to run away. And maybe attaching here is better. And then jump. But anyway, don't make one eye on the side. It's better to just run away. And if your opponent's trying to make one eye on the side, sometimes it might be better just to surround. I don't know about this case, because it doesn't really matter. But sometimes you can just ignore that and surround it. But in this case, I guess you can just block. Uh, then you can lag three moves ahead. That works too. Uh, so that was some good ideas. I'm trying to surround. You want to put a little bit more pressure on it though. If you're going to attack, you want to put more pressure. What's the more pressure move though? <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe just capping. Like push it up. And then cut this off. Build a moya right there. Don't run with knight's moves. It's how you get cut and you die. Like, I could literally just play right here. And then right here. And you have two cutting points. Like, that stone's not gonna survive. I could potentially kill your corner, too. Um, you know those big bodybuilders, you know, and the, what, uh, the MMA fighters or whatever? If you saw an MMA fighter, like, big buff dude, new martial arts, you knew he knew martial arts, really good, would you go punch him in his face? I don't think I would. So why would you punch thickness in its face with one stone? So why don't attach to thickness with a, like one stone? That's that's a that's a bad. It's just gonna end badly. You don't punch an MMA fighter in the face. You don't touch thickness <laughs> with <the> stone. <laughs> it's not gonna end well. Okay. Okay. So here's a good way to tell if the center's dominant, right? If some deep philosophy there, if there's a white stone, a black stone, a white stone, a black stone, a white stone, and three more black stones, and let's say one more white stone, or two more white stones, then the center is dominant. When there's black and white, there is no moyo. There is no points. Nothing. Nada. Zip. It's dame. If there's black and white stones all over the place, there's no moyo. So you don't want to try to build or reduce the center. So like we see in a few moves here, after we make these exchanges, both players tried to build the center attach h3 no how come no one played q3 because these are 12 q's and they suck me being one of the 12 q's this is me i'm not saying 12 q's suck let me rephrase that <laughs> this is me and my opponent of equal strength and i suck at this game so obviously i'm not gonna play q3 <laughs> I better rephrase that before someone takes offense to that. <laughs> um, no, I'm making fun of myself right now. So, yeah, this is classy 12Q. Uh, but this is a nice move. It unsettles. It unsettles white. Uh, don't run with knight's moves. We established that. Don't block Moyos. 
that are very, very small because they're very small. Uh, this cut is not necessary because your opponent can disconnect under. I go here. He goes here. He's like, I'm going to cut you. And I'm like, no, you're not. And he goes, yes, I am. And I go, no, you're not. And he goes, oh, crap, I'm in Atari. And I go, yup, yup. Now I'm connected and you're dead. Easy. Easy, easy, easy. Easy peasy. Yeah, so don't try to cut something that's not cuttable. It's like trying to take some, like, Crayola scissors or something. Like, whatever that maker of the scissors. Like, the kindergarten scissors. And trying to cut a brick. If it's not cuttable, don't try. You're just going to hurt yourself. Alright, now we see all the center moves. See, dame, 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 dame. <laughs> all that dame. Uh, but the center's alive. The center's alive, and the side can connect under. That's mainly the point I was trying to get across. Because the center group is alive. It has a base on top. It's pretty much connected. Um, but the C11 stone can connect very easily. So there's no cut. Because you're cutting two... If you try to cut the C11 stone, the center's alive and you can, C11 can connect. So you're not going to try to cut because when you're just going to let it connect to the center because you don't want to lose the side points. So there actually isn't a cut. And in a roundabout way, there's no cut. There's either you're trying to cut two living groups or you're going to just let them connect because you don't want to lose the points. So there's no real cut. And don't make empty triangles and let your opponent capture a stone. If there's no cutting point, then don't fix the cutting point. Instead, just Tanuki and do anything else and it's better. You know, like playing in game or something that's that's funny all about that dummy about that dummy no sente <laughs> that, that's funny uh p2 is big p2 is very big like anything but these moves is pretty big almost anything Something that actually does something is much bigger than all of these moves. And don't make a Tiger's Mouth when one of your Tiger's Mouth stones are in Atari. It leads to a co with cutting points. So let's just let's just write that down, guys. If your Tiger's Mouth is if you're in Atari, don't make a Tiger's Mouth around the t Atari. It just it's 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 a bad. It's a bad. It's just gonna have a lot of cutting points. And if your opponent can be cut off and attacked very severely, you should probably cut him off and attack it very severely. It might be worth it. You never know. Okay, so don't play a Nobi to fix your cut, and then on the very next move, play the Empty Triangle to fix your cut. Because that's just that's that's just combining two bad shapes to make one like one big bad cluster of stones so there was a cut he nobied he's like oh crap and he backed up and sat down uh so now he has a noby with an empty triangle that both did nothing but barely fix the cut instead of just fixing the cut you know all right more dame more dame well okay that's not dame but this is really small like this is maybe three points Whereas a side move like this is like 10 points. And I don't want to go into counting that. I have an entire video. I have videos on in-game counting, but it's, it's, it's a lot. That's not big. The next move is big. There you go. The commentator from Avatar Legend of Korra. I don't know who that is. But I hope he's awesome.
makes me want to say, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. Dame, dame, dame. I've seen some of Legend of Korra. I got bored. <laughs> it wasn't as good as The Last Airbender. More Dame, and then more empty triangles. And suicide moves. More empty triangles. More empty triangles. There we go, there's a big move. Doot, doot. Doot, 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 doot. You know, if I had like a dollar for every empty triangle in this game, and another dollar for every Dame in this game, and then another dollar for every time they committed suicide in this game, or tried to commit suicide in this game, I'd have a lot of freaking dollars. And that's just stuff you shouldn't be doing. Like, it's Dame, 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 Empty Triangle, Dame. Dame, 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 another Empty Triangle, Suicide. Prevent your opponent from committing suicide by ignoring them, and then your opponent's going to leave it until you find out that they're trying to commit suicide, and you're just going to have to deal with it. I'd have a lot of dollars. So don't forget, there was an Empty Triangle here, which leaves a, and then they black ignored it, which left a cut at B, which can threaten another cut at C, and then white tried to cut later at D and killed himself, and play the empty triangle at E, and another empty triangle at F. Granted, that one was one point, I guess, but still, come on. Dame, 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 empty triangle, dame. Dame, 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 suicide, dame. It's like the last 20 moves. If I got a dollar for every bad quote I made, uh, you'd have a lot of dollars, too. <laughs> well, if I got, like, tipped every time I taught something from the people who learned something... Like, if I got tipped every time I taught someone something, and, like, everyone tipped, even if it was the same topic... I'd have a, I would be like a freaking millionaire. That's that's the life of a go teacher. Like eighty or ninety percent of your lessons are free, and then you get the two like the ten percent that pity you and give you some like lunch money for lessons. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this game was this can this game was quite horrible. Not gonna lie, it's pretty pretty uh, pretty bad to see myself. Play as a 12Q. Alright, well, while we're in the mood of making fun of people, does anyone want their game reviewed? <laughs> uh, actually, no, I don't. I'm lagging a lot today. Oh, hey, G, I accidentally clicked. I'm lagging a lot, like, I can barely click stuff. I don't know why, but I can barely click stuff today. And I'm thinking it's because I got something running. I'm not sure what. I tried closing stuff before the stream, but I don't know. You wouldn't mind. Well, I wouldn't mind either, but I'm lagging like crazy. I want to review someone's game, but my computer doesn't want to. So I'm debating what to do. Uh... Let's close Blizzard. Let's close Discord. Let's close Scappity Skype. Oh, I forgot. I have my other web pages up. That's probably why. All right, let's close like 10 web browser tabs because I forgot those were open.
and just hit the X, then another X, then another X. All right, now let's now let's try this whole review thing. Let's close that. Close that. All right. Give me a link to your game and prepare to be shouted at because apparently I'm in a shouting mood today. All right. So, oh, please shout. Please shout. All right. Let the shouting begin. All right, guys, he said to shout, so uh, you guys better shout, too. Probably going to shout that he hasn't played Tengen. Because he wants me to shout at his opponent more, obviously. Don't worry. Don't worry. I will find something wrong with his 25-point win game. And I will show him how he can win by 26. <laughs> it's fine. I'm sure we'll still learn something from it. It's too late now. Already loaded it. Ha ha. Too late. Too little. Too late. Let. Him. But then I have to load another one. <laughs> I just got this one to load. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> fine. Hurry up. Ooh, comments. I'm reading the comments. There's a lot of chat in your games. So I want to tell you first lesson. Don't talk while you're playing Go. It's very distracting. I bet you'll be a stone stronger if you actually look at the Go board instead of the chat. It's like texting while you're driving. You'll be a lot better driver if you're not running red lights. Maybe this is the review. I'm hoping this is a review. Copy URL. <laughs> How you play correspondence? I dislike correspondence because I lose all of them by time. Like, after a month, I stop caring about the game. I'm ready to play a different game. It's like playing the same game of Monopoly for a freaking month. No, go away. Where did... Yeah. You don't want to play the same game of Monopoly for a month. You're just like, I give up. I don't care. I've come back to the game. I was like, who's winning? I don't even know. I haven't looked at this game in like a week. No, I would give up. Alright, this is analyze mode. No, I want to review this game because I want, you know the the thing to say review not analyze i am not null user you loser i am clausius uh da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. all right so we are reviewing a 12q versus a 2q that doesn't sound like it's going to end well why is a 12k versus versing a 2k All right, so du, 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 okay. First things first. Don't play cross fuseki against someone who's t ten stones stronger than you, because cross fuseki is very complicated. 
Therefore, your opponent's going to have a very big advantage because they understand the game more than you do if they're 10 ranks stronger than you. Uh, also, when your opponent has Komi, uh, there's a, uh, my theory is that uh, Cross Attack is good for White if White has Komi. All right, we played Joseki, more Joseki. Not quite. Uh, I don't know if that's an old Joseki or if it's not Joseki. I, the move is usually here. Like that's normally the move, right? Some people are just they don't understand it. They just understand it better than you. That's what I'm saying. Uh, this doesn't feel Joseki. I think. Ignoring a weak group. That never ends badly, right? It's an old Joseki shape. Okay. I haven't seen it in a while, then. Uh, surely you jump, right? Fundamentals by Kageyama. Alright, well, I am missing my fundamentals, then. But I do know my fundamentals of weak groups is defend the weak group before Tanuki. So, surely this is wrong, right? Uh, surroundings more profitable. Maybe he's being nice. Hmm, that's not the right shape. The right shape is this. This is the shape. This one, I go here. Oh, no, no, I don't. Because, yeah, that cut doesn't work. But... Surely there's a Tsuji I can do. It's really bad shape. Ah! I can threaten life. Aha! Uh -huh. You go here. I go here. You go here. And then I go here. And then you connect. And then I cut. There we go. Okay, so there's some Aji there. There's a lot of Aji. So, just just bump your head. Or kill all the Aji, that's fine too. I mean, who needs Aji to live? Oh, more empty triangles, cool. Uh, no, you need eyes. You don't need empty triangles, you need Panookis. Yeah, so... There's a cut here. And I'm gonna say this is best in my opinion, because unsettling your opponent immediately makes you stronger. Because you have so many forcing moves when your opponent's not alive. So I think this cuts be the best defense. Because it unsettles white. But an empty triangle's not usually the best idea for living. And giving your opponent a panuki is usually not the best idea for stealing eyes. Okay. Oh, now you want a panuki. Like, after you're alive, huh? Um, escape. Even if he has a forcing move there, escape. It's much more valuable. Living small is not worth living local. Just run away. Oh, hey, you lived in Sente. That's, that's weird. All right, so right side. Yep, cool. Playing those big moves. Uh-huh, old Joseki. You have a lot of old Josekis. You must study old games. At least you're studying them. Ah, hi. Go high. When you have a low stone, you want to play high. So when there's a low stone, you play high. Third line goes up to the fourth line. Good shape to remember. That's flat. Um... No need. There's not really a moyo here, so I would just go for points or pressure. I mean, if you want a moyo, you can do that if you really want one. My style would be to go for points here because there's white stones here and white stones here. So there's white stones on the left side and the bottom side, so I just go for points. Uh, that's a problem. Oh, really? So, Andy said that there's no good reason to play high, even if the stone is low, huh? 
Huh. This is something I learned a long time ago, though. Like, this is the common shape. So, maybe it's old. You Maybe this is just an old theory. I know it's a theory. And I know it's a shape. So, I know it's not bad. But... If... Andy's saying it, then probably it's a new thing. Or maybe it's just too much Aji nowadays. I don't know. It feels really flat, though, if you do this. <clears throat> um, I'll keep that in mind and see if other pros agree or disagree. Uh, wrong direction. So, let me ask you. If I played here... Would you want to make a wall towards, like, the sea, where soldiers would never come from? Or would you want to make a wall towards the land to block the soldiers incoming? Yeah, block the open side, not the small side. So that means, when you play this, you don't block. You connect or descend. Descend's common, but so is connect. But I think this is probably best. Because there's not a mo Like, again, there's not really a moyo. But there is some chasing and some points. Why are you guys talking about Mexicans? What are you on about? Atlantic Wall. Gotta watch out for Aquaman and Mexicans. Don't what on earth are you guys saying? I have no idea what you guys are on about. Walls. Oh, the. <laughs> yeah, don't don't make a castle to block out Aquaman. Make the castle to block out you know military soldiers. Okay, I get it now. I get it. Okay, uh, yeah, so this is wrong direction. Mm, there's not a moyo, so I'd probably double honey. Yeah, and then, uh, dudes, and then dudes, 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 dudes. Oh, man, hold on, don't play a honey if you're gonna kill the corner. So you can, you can either give up the corner and live on the side, or you can just live in the corner. You can just give on the side or just live in the corner, but uh, double honey. Oh, you don't normally play this honey. So if you look in Joseca dictionaries and this honey is not in the dictionaries, there's probably a reason it's not in the dictionaries. And that reason is, there's a lot of freaking cuts. So, yeah. You don't want to play B4 if you're going to sacrifice the corner. But if you're not going to sacrifice the corner, then you want to play B4. And that other variation. Uh, you know, you still have a cut at G2, or G3. And there's still a clamp at H2. So this is a very weird shape. You should probably stick to Josaki's. More empty triangles. More empty triangles. Uh, so this kind of sucks for black. <laughs> um, no, you don't want to play B four because you have you lose the B three Aji. You wanna you want the Nobi at uh, F four because you want to attack K four. So the Nobi at F four is quite important, and you don't want to lose the B three Aji. Um, anyway, anyway, uh, yeah, so don't play G2. G2's a bad, because it led to all this bad stuff. Um, so I'm going to go out on a limb. No B is to move forward. No B is to, like, extend or move forward. 
not an extension, but like just attaching and moving forward one step. Uh, usually to gain, like, no be move forward, gain two liberties, basically. All right, so if you recall, black could have gotten a very big corner. Nobi isn't always a push. It just I just meant push up. Honestly, I'm probably using Nobi wrong when pushing, but it's just a it's just a step forward. Uh there's a letter G7. But okay. So black got A and that's it. Black had a very large corner and could have attacked something, right? So I'm going to go out on a limb and say something in that bottom left corner is wrong. Now let's also look at B. B and A are hardly getting anything compared to what you should be getting. So I think you're messing up Joseki's a lot. I think you're trying to be fancy with Joseki's and you're getting less and less with them. Uh, the G7 cut. Uh, maybe, but uh, might be overplay to try right now. I'm not sure. I'm not worried about it as white because uh, the weak group on the bottom. Anyway, so I'm thinking a very common mistake is you're trying to be fancy with Joseki's, and you're messing up Joseki's, and you're also having a little bit of directional play mistakes. Direction of play, there's a very easy way to determine which direction you're supposed to be facing. And that is, when the at the start of the Joseki, say, do I want the left side, the right, or the right side? Or do I want this side or that side? Don't look at the corner, just this side or that side. Then you pick a Joseki that leads you to that side. And that's, that's basically direction of play. It's the simplest version of direction of play. Is pick a side, then pick a Joseki that leads to that side. If you don't know a Joseki, then you should probably look one up and study one. Uh, however, some of these Josekis that you're playing, you're messing them up at the end. And you're making a lot of uh, mistakes at the end of the variations. you got to learn the whole variation, not just part of it. Uh, because you're getting bad results in places you shouldn't be uh, getting them. So in the, in the A area, that was your corner. You had complete control of that corner. And somehow white has gotten more than you. In the B area, true was White's corner, but you should have still should have gotten something. You should have gotten a little bit there. Uh, instead, White got a lot of thickness in the top side. So it's not quite even, or it's not close to even. It's just too good for White. Uh, so the top left side could have been handled better, uh, but the bottom left side is you played bad direction. You played uh, you played a Hane that's not Joseki, you ha and then you got cut, and then your entire area fell apart. So, work on your direction and Joseki knowledge. Because Josekis just will simplify your opening, and they're good tools to use. Josekis are like good, are like tools. And you want to have good tools, good working tools to use when you need to accomplish a job. For example, playing on the bottom side or the left side. When you need to accomplish something, you want to know what tools to use to get there. But if you don't have any tools, then you're going to have a lot of trouble with it. Okay, so the left side of the board, I think, shows uh, Joseki and direction knowledge. A lack of Joseki and direc direction knowledge. Uh, don't fix your opponent's cuts, because there is a cut there. So you probably want to run away from the thickness and away uh, from that, so that way you can threaten to do it later. Like, as long as that's weak, it'll be easier to defend. So by leaving that weak, you can attack it later. Or you can force white to fix you while defending it. But this is pushing from behind and getting a Hane on your, uh, on your own head. Okay, so your opponent goes in. All right, so we want to surround. So shoulder hit. Diagonal. Or maybe Hane and double Hane. Mm, 
Mm-hmm. So one and eleven, like one, two, and eleven, is kind of a side joseki to build thickness. And then you want to push it towards thickness. So I kind of made thickness and then pushed it towards the thickness and then finished the thickness. So that way it's going towards thickness. And then if white tries to run out, I'm just going to surround, uh, make shape. And if it gets out, it's fine. Uh, it's no big deal. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, and then I can come back and do something else. Right? And then I can just go along with the rest of the game. But I, white's clearly getting zero points. So it's just a very basic variation of what you can ex of what you can try. Not attach to Q11 because you don't want to attach. So if I attach to Q11, you don't attach to weak stones, right? That is because your opponent can use all the odd gene, all the forcing moves to make shape very easily. And then make easy life. Ta-da! No, attaching it has too many forcing moves. So the follow-ups are good for white. It's too easy to live. So the diagonal's usually better. Oh. Uh, if you're building the thickness to attack, and then they run away from the thickness, then the thickness is pointless. So... Um, that's like preparing for an invasion that's not going to happen. Or you're building a... You, they're, say you have an enemy force that's trying to run away, right? They have the option of going left or right. And you're like, oh, okay, so I'm going to build a big wall left to trap them. But then they see you doing that, so they start running right. You need to trick them and force them to run left first, then build the wall. And the way you do that is try to build the wall in Sente. Right? But if you can't build the wall in Sente, then don't even worry about it. Just try and gain profit by surrounding. Right? And then even if they run away, it's fine. As long as you get some profit. Uh, and then maybe you can do something later. So maybe you can use this now. Who knows? Uh, maybe you can use that group later. But the thing is, you can't build something to chase them towards if you're not chasing them towards it. Because it's too easy to run away. Because now it's... Uh, now it's not even going that direction, so what does P14 even do? It's kind of pointless. Uh, don't play a cap when they have three directions to run. So black has the A direction the B-ish direction and the C direction, right? So when they have three directions, normally a direct attack is not going to be important enough unless you're trying to defend a weak group. Like, unless you're trying to defend a weak group, then, yeah, of course that's good. But here, you're alive everywhere, right? So you're only trying to destroy points or make points. And those are one of the three profits, right? Uh, make points, take points, defend weak group. Those are the three profits, uh, usually. Usually. So in this case, there's no points. So just attack it from afar. So threaten to do something else and attack it from afar uh, will likely be more valuable. So for example, I could simply place a stone right here. While this stone's running, that group might get weak. So take points. You can't really make any points here. You don't need to defend a weak group here. Uh, so destroy some points. But don't force a cap, because then you're just going to get thickness to dominate. Uh, jump is much better. Shape. Doesn't have cuts. But you're building thickness towards whitestone, so it's dominate. Hello, Ragnarok. So it kind of feels like black's playing dominate. And more dominate. And then white's playing dominate. And then black's threatening to cut in the dominate. Uh, okay, that's weird. And black does cut the Dame. But now it's a weak group because white didn't defend it. So instead of this Nobi, what if I just go, like, right here? Defends the cut, but also makes me points. 
Um, careful. Are you gonna kill white? Because that would be fantastic. Uh, that's a co white will never win. Yeah, that's a co white will never win. Uh, why are you just live? White takes, you connect. This is a ladder. A ladder is like an infinite amount of co-threats. Uh, if it goes right here, then you can just run or take a liberty. No, no take a liberty. No, 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 I'm stupid, you can't do that. Um, okay, so now it's a co. Okay, so maybe you can threaten a gnat. Hmm. But is it really worth a corner? Like, what if you try to lose the co? Like, what if, instead of giving up an entire corner, what if you try to lose a co? So let's say white does something, you respond, right? White, let's say white does something, you respond. Okay, so white takes. You're risking two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, 10, 11, or 12, 14 points. Okay, you're risking 14 points. Okay, so we need a co-threat for 14 points. Uh, there's one. Oh, he's gonna respond? Okay. Try to lose a co. Because if you can get two moves in a row, it's usually more valuable than a co. So if you win the co for free, then you win. Easy, right? But it, what's your plan if you lose the co? Just get two moves in a row. So this is like a flower co for black. It's very easy for black. But if white loses the co and gets nothing, then white loses. However, white lost the co and got an entire corner. So I feel like white got more, because corners should be more valuable. But you didn't, you had a flower co, you didn't risk anything. Yeah. So, I didn't count the capture. Uh, yes, but if, I'm assuming if I win the co, white's going to get something equal to A. Like B. Um, so when you count a co, yes, it's a huge headache for white. Because white has to play a co threat that's as valuable as A, otherwise black will ignore. But black doesn't have to play a co threat as big as A. It's okay if A lives for black. That's what I'm trying to I'm not trying to say that A's not big. Don't get me wrong, A's very big. But it doesn't mean you have to, you don't have to have a risk. You don't have to sacrifice a corner to kill A. Yeah, so here it's like black almost gained nothing. It would be better to live in the corner, lose the co, and get two moves in a row and gain more. So yeah, Fiala's got the right idea. You want to look at the exchange of points. So yes, A is very big, but so is B. B is also very big. So it's like it canceled out and black almost got nothing i mean there's there's probably um there's probably some change of the scale of points but compared to what could have happened this is almost nothing uh so black should win or should respond and think about losing the co thank you uh so think about losing a co whenever you're in a co unless it's a huge headache for you like unless your group's dying like for white white's group is dying so white has no choice but to fight the co but for black, black is risking like five or six stones. So for black, the code is very simple. It's very easy. You just like, okay, I'm risking what, 12 points? So I just need to make two moves in a row. So try to lose a code. This is actually something I saw Dwyer and uh, Urbatsko struggle with, I think like last year or the year before. It was like when he was censoring codes because he was having a lot of trouble with them. Uh, and uh, I would just go in, I would see him struggle with it. I'm just like, stop trying to fight the code. Just lose it. Try to lose a co that's not very valuable. Like, it's not high risk for you, then try to lose it. If your opponent loses the co and gains nothing, then yeah, you get a lot. But if your opponent wins the co, just get two moves in a row. And then the exchange rate of points is very good for you. So sometimes the, way to, the best way to fight a co is to try and lose a co. 
That way you get two moves in a row, and that's extremely valuable. This Mega Window, it's just something we added yesterday to the stream to uh, let people watch if I'm boring. Uh, no, the way to fight a Ko is to try and threaten to get two moves in a row. The best way to fight a Ko is to threaten to get two moves in a row somewhere. So, like, the top side, like, that would have been a great Ko threat right here. Um, but now it's not that great. Or now it's not as 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 powerful because now White's already dead. So now White can solely focus on attacking this. However, because the group on the left is dead, there's a lot of Aji, but I'm worried that... If the group on the left is dead, then does that mean the left side's thickness? Yes. So if I just play a diagonal here and push you left, are you gonna live or... If I just let you connect, is it okay? Because it's almost thickness on the left side with that group being dead. I'm not sure. I'd have to read a lot more than this. But with the left group being dead, that's almost thickness. And now you're invading next to thickness, theoretically. So I think it'd be better just to reduce. It seems safer and easier to just reduce. Uh, but your opponent got scared, so that's cool. Don't run to the second line. You run outside. So... If you're in a war zone and you're trying to get away from the enemy soldier, you don't try and dig a hole and stick your head in it. You run. <laughs> you run away. <laughs> if you're trying to survive, you don't go down into the dirt. You run as far away from your can as you can to your support and your strength. So don't stick your head in the dirt. <laughs> when you're trying to run away it doesn't work because then your opponent can just surround you and you're in a lot of trouble <laughs> nice everyday tip um yeah when your opponent attacked you he should have surrounded you okay that's a cool tsuji but it's a big flaw with your little tsuji there that is you lost more points than you gained so he gained four points and gave you like four back and sente so it's not worth sente well, i guess if you fix the code then you lose sente but anyway it wasn't that valuable sente was more valuable uh sente is valuable guys no you're already connected he can't cut this there's no cut if he tries to clamp you just go here oh crap never mind never mind never mind you have a cut uh the nobi aha no, that's not going to work. Dad gummit. Why is your shape empty triangles everywhere? Okay, normally that shape works. Okay, if it doesn't connect, then don't even do it. Just play a diagonal. That And then uh, make eyes. Uh, da -da 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 -da. How much is sente value? Um, sente value is equal to the biggest move. But less than urgent. So Sente is as valuable as the biggest move, but less than urgent. That's probably the best definition I can give you of Sente. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Running with Knight's moves, but it's okay. Your thickness is right there, so maybe it's okay. Maybe it's okay. Uh, but then again, having cuts everywhere, thickness or no thickness. So all you have to do is actually Nobi here. And fix. And then if your opponent cuts, you're like, haha, you idiot! And just Atari and run them into your thickness. But then you, then you're like, leaving an Atari, which is a Sente cut. Don't leave Sente cuts. Sente cuts are bad. Because that's how you die. So Sente cuts... Then your group's... Oh, this happened. Oh, okay. Did you die? Because then I'm going to say I told you so. Because I totally did. 
Um, I think this only works because you're your left dead group. So normally this won't work because normally I just push right here and then push right here and then Atari and then Atari and I'm fine. But in this case, he can say, okay, I'll, you can say, okay, I'll sacrifice that group and live with this group. So in this case, the net worked. But normally, it's very bad. Uh, so can you do anything else? No. Blast that Aji. You know, that, that dead group that you sacrificed is saving your rear so many times for the rest of the game. Like, twice I could have killed this group if that left group wasn't there. Maybe three times. If that left group like wasn't Aji, I probably could have killed you on top like three times. So you sacrificed the group to have Aji to live in the future. <laughs> You're such a deep reader. <laughs> um, connecting here is not as valuable as making the eyes. I think. <laughs> yes, bless dead groups in the Fuseki. They save our lives. That end game. Oh, look, more Dame. Oh, that's painful. Hey, more Dame. And the one point go to move. Okay, you're already connected, you're already alive, right? Just Atari. And then go play first line, second line, Sente moves. Like that one. Uh, you're alive, right? You're alive. Oh, uh, you better be. You spent a lot of moves. Yeah, you have Mia. You can make a second eye and you can connect. Yeah, you're definitely alive. More. Okay, center. At least it's value. I have more center. Stop making points in the center and go take. It's bad. Making points in the center and go take is like investing in the lottery tickets. Uh, if he gets the same points, the one trade with big dead group is better, huh? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, the, o the OGS banner does wonders for the viewers. Um, okay, where, what was I saying? Let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, m making Gote moves in the center is like buying lottery tickets and investing money that you shouldn't be investing... Not like spare change or anything. Like money you shouldn't be investing in the lottery tickets. Very rarely someone will win the Powerball and be like Takamiya. But most of the time, more than not, you will be playing and losing value. Uh, it's not a good investment. Investing stones in Gote in the center is not a good investment. It's sides much more valuable. You know, getting a job is much more valuable than playing the lottery. For the majority of people. <laughs> da -da 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 All right, end game. All right, so conclusion time. Conclusion time. Okay, I remember the. Oh, what the crap are you doing up here? Okay. I remember the opening, it was some just learn Joseki and pick a direction of play and then pick the Joseki that goes in that direction. So you can work on your Joseki a bit. Uh, and Ko's. You learn some cool stuff about Ko's. How to fight a Ko. The best way to fight a Ko is to lose a Ko. Um... I think those are the two most the important things for you to work on right now. Josekis and Ko's. I would, because there's a lot of information. You can always say a lot of stuff in a game. But eventually you want to categorize it and lower it down to like one or two things. And then work on those one or two things for a couple of games. And then review. And then try to find one or two more things to work on. And work on those one or two things. And just take it one or two things at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself. Whenever you see a lecture or a lesson or a game review... There's a lot of information in there, yeah. And it's cool to see all that information. It's good to make mental notes. 
But at the end of it, you want to review it and say, what is one thing or two things I can learn from this lecture or review? What is one or two things to learn and focus on that I can apply in my very next game? And that's what you want to do is take one or two things. So yes, I said a lot of stuff, made a lot of jokes, made a lot of references and stuff like that, or a lot of metaphors. But at the end of the day, I think Josekis and Co's, if you didn't even learn just those two things from this game, then I think this game was very profitable. Oh, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the Insane World of Go, Shunoshi. And while we're at it and people are ding-a-linging me, uh, <laughs> made a lot of bad jokes, yeah. Uh, yeah, right after the ding-a-linging joke. Um, if you uh, like the like what I do, if you like watching me play games, make jokes, bad jokes, and like me reviewing and teaching, then support me by following or subscribing. You have to treat shapes like the girls. Learn what they like and what they dislike. <laughs> and if you want to receive not uh, notifications, make sure to follow. Uh, so that way you can see it when I go live next time. You should get a talk show. Are you kidding me? That would be the worst, most watched talk show ever. I'm like the guy people would make videos about of dumb expressions. Is P3 a possible cut? P, P, P3. Uh, no. That is because there's a Tiger's Mom. So if I try to play P3, play stone, it's not a pin, right? If I go P3, and he goes, boink. And I go, boink. Tiger's Mouth. Atari. Connect. Thanks for the follow, Jingamu3. Jingamu, Jingamu, Jamal. Sounds like Japanese or something if I say it really fast. Uh, yeah, shapes are really important. Uh, so yeah, so I can't play right here and cut you off because there's a tiger's mouth. So yeah, it's fine because of the tiger's mouth. Yeah, shapes are very important. That's how you accomplish things efficiently. So if you think of shapes, shapes are two things. One, their eyes. They're fast life. They're good for living. They're eyes. And two, their efficiency. So it's accomplishing what you need to accomplish very efficiently. Yeah, not a problem. Um, so bad shapes leave Aji. Aji is a Don's best friend because messing with Aji is like one of the best skills you can play and learn as a Don. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so yeah, uh, Aji is one of the most effective tools to use as a Don player. Knight's moves are used for attacking, not defending. And if you're making a female quote, then I just walked right into a bad joke, didn't I? Yeah, I should really watch what I say. Oh, man. If you want to be famous, then you have to turn yourself first into a meme. Appropriate. <laughs> uh, here we go. Knight's moves are like females. They're very good attackers, but not very good at defenders. Thanks for the follow, Ragnarok. <laughs> Aji is good for a Don. Uh, it's one of the ranks. So Dons are like black belts and go, and Qs are like stones or levels. Uh, D A N. Um, so one Q is one stone below one Don, which is like the first level black belt. So if a, there's a 12 Q, then there are 12 ranks below a first level black belt. And Dons are basically your black belts. And then there's professional Dons, which are professional level black belts. So the black belts above the black belts, basically. So it's amateur Dons, professional Dons, and the Qs, which are below the Dons. Thanks for the follow, but kitten. 
And as always, guys, if you like my lessons and want to get private lessons and get your own games reviewed once a week, then uh, no mafia involves. Sorry, no mafia. Then be sure to check out seansgogroup.com for uh, private lessons or if you want me to just review your games every week. If you want to pay me to yell at you, then check out my private lessons on seansgogroup.com. Uh, and if you like what I do, then be sure to subscribe to my Twitch channel or follow me on Patreon to see my videos. And don't forget to check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Glossius, for more videos. I think I heard somewhere that Q is a student and Don is a teacher. Uh, not quite. Be a sub, don't be a scrub. Um... No, that's not quite right. Because top-level Dons will become Ensei in Japan to become a professional, and Ensei literally means, like, student. I am a double-digit Q streamer. <laughs> Welcome to the insane world of Go and Kalagon stream. And Kalagon. And Kalagon. What does that mean, and Kalagon? It's a funny sounding word, name. Alright, so let's do a would you rather. Would you rather. Would you rather live under sky with no stars at night or live under sky with no clouds during the day? I don't know. A dragon. Gotcha. Tolkien. The most famous dragon. I'm sorry, I'm ignorant. <laughs> I'm ignorant when it comes to a dragon. I'm sorry. Uh, no clouds during the day. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm ignorant. Are you going to unfollow me because of my ignorance? <laughs> that would be horrible. If I, every time I'm ignorant, I lose a follower, I would have no watchers and no followers. <laughs> yeah, I'm such a peasant. I'm a Go player. What are you talking about? I know nothing outside of Go. Uh... Da, 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 da. Outside of Go, I am very ignorant of everything. <laughs> um, follow unseen, unembarrassed. Hey, if you sub, you get the classy link. <laughs> if you sub, you get the Classy Link. Oh, for $10. If you sub for $10, you get the Classy Link. Do you use AI to review your games? What is your opinion of this? Any technical... Da -da 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 -da. You know nothing, Colossius. I get that one! I get that one! You know nothing, Jon Snow. You know nothing, Colossius. I got that one. Um, AI to review my games. I think it's very useful, but... If you don't have a teacher. But a teacher is much more useful. Like, I'd rather get lessons than have a bot go over my games. But I will say with the bots technology nowadays, it's very useful to have a strong opinion if you can't afford lessons. Dead gum cops. So an AI to review your games, uh, I think is a very great thing for those without too much money, or those that want, don't want to invest money until they get stronger or something. But there's nothing like an actual teacher like an actual teacher is always going to be better but having like um but having a, a bot to review your games that you can't afford to get to pay for review or something the percentages are not perfect the percentages are not 100 percent accurate but they give you a general idea and then they also suggest better moves uh, and so, like, Leela, I'll sometimes have Leela look at my game, and it can su she can suggest better moves, but, uh, she's not that much stronger than me. 
So bots are useful for learning new strategies and maybe seeing some higher level moves. But once you're within a couple ranks of the bot, it's probably detrimental. You probably want to have a pro. But it, uh, like for example, if I had a nine dom bot go over my game, I'd probably learn some stuff from it. But it would be more efficient for me to learn from a professional player. I have Lila on my computer and she crushes me. <laughs> Leela Leela can beat me but uh da 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 da, 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 da. no the slide and blo oh crap not yeah there we go sliding and blocking is old Joseki so there's a theory that this slide block in my opinion this slide block and extend should never be played because on your side of the board it's usually more effective to just jump back it's more moyo it's fa it's fast paced so in my opinion this is better because if you are low then the shoulder hit is too easy for white in my opinion so on your side of the board, I would prefer a jump back. On your opponent's side of the board, this settling is too good. So if you're on your opponent's side of influence, settling this is this settling is too good for black. It's too easy for black. So usually white will not let black settle. White would rather pincer when black is settling on white side of the board and get the moyo because letting black settle like that is too perfect for black. So, in my opinion, this slide is common, but this, for this, is either going to be good for black or good for white. In my opinion. Because the shoulder hit is too easy for white to reduce, and the life is too good if you're, you're on your opponent's side of the board. Um, and then if you think that that there's also the pincer for white so in my opinion that Joseki should never happen uh, yeah it's very old it's just an old Joseki and you do have a lot of old Josekis in your games like you played a Joseki in the top left and I was like I don't even know this one <laughs> I haven't seen this one like a, in a long time if at all uh, because in the top left it was an old Joseki for sure uh, yeah, because it's very good for reducing a Mayo. Shoulder hits are very good for reducing Mayo. So, for example, if I have this and this, this is... Okay, maybe... I need a more extreme example. So, let's say I play this, black gets this. There we go. So, I need to do something on the right. But, what if I just build a Mayo? Right. Uh, this is a quick example. I'm not sure how it would play out, but if I needed to, I could easily reduce the right and build my own Moyo. If I needed to. Uh, like, that's worst case scenario. So shoulder hit is a very good way to reduce the right side while building your own Moyo. In this case, there's no Moyo, so I'd probably just invade. Like, uh, here. it's much easier so this is not the best example to use but ideally if you could build a moyo you can easily shoulder hit reduce black's moyo and build your own yeah yeah don't don't do second line or third line armpit hit <laughs> don't hit the underarm hit the head <laughs> hitting the head is so much more effective than the underarm pit that's actually something that I think is not an actual go term, but something the online community made up is the underarm hit instead of the shoulder hit. A bit is a relative amount. Yeah. Everything in Go is always relative. Armpit hit! 
You know what? You know what that means? The three three invasions actually, the armpit invasion. <laughs> that totally means the three three is an armpit invasion. <laughs> <laughs> I should test this theory. How do you learn Fuseki? What rank should you really start studying Fuseki? How much Joseki do you need to know? Or answer any other question on Fuseki? Okay, okay, okay. That's a lot. Uh, so, at every rank, you should have an idea of how to play in the opening. Uh, so, I would say at every... Like, how many Joseki should you know? That's also relative. So... I would say as many Joseki that are played in your games are ones you should know. At least. At minimum, the Josekis that are played at your level should be the ones that you study and know. Then if you want to increase your Joseki knowledge and give yourself more options or more weapons, more, more tools to use, then you want to um, increase your Joseki knowledge to have more options available to you. So you, you can always learn Joseki. I know thousands of Joseki variations. I know a couple thousand variations at least. And that's just just experience, study, books, pro games. Um, now, what level should you know the opening? Well, at every level, your opening can be improved. <laughs> I can guarantee you that you probably should work on your opening. Um, well, every Don knows a thousand Joseki. You know, you know, every Don knows a lot more than they think they do. Every Don knows at least a thousand or two thousand Josekis. Um, but okay. So, in the opening, you need to understand at least some basics. So, at the very basic level, it's which side is the most open side. And then it's uh, which, uh, at what point does an extension from a Shamari become more valuable than the open side? Or an extension from a fourth line more, more valuable than the open side between two third lines? Uh, so it has to do with fourth line and third line extensions. So it's like open side, extensions, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then you go into what Josekis give me the proper direction. So am I going the top side or the right side? So we talked about in the, this game, right? So in the bottom left, when he attached, did you, uh, did you want to do the bottom side or did you want the corner or left side? Normally you want the sides, not the corner in a Joseki. But on the bottom side, when he attached, in that case, the corner was bigger than the side because there is not enough points on the side and there's not a moyo. So in that case, the corner was more important than the side. So you chose the Joseki um, that gave you the most value. So in the, so do you want the left side or do you want the bottom side? And then you figure out what Josekis will give you that side. Uh, and then you play the most common ones and learn those. And then at higher levels, you can play more complex ones to get a little bit more. Uh, I was only teaching today. Uh, and then you just increase your Joseki knowledge and give yourself more weapons or more tools to use. Now, how do you learn opening? That gets a little bit more complicated, but the easiest answer is professional games. And you can even use uh, like online dictionary or online pattern searching databases. For example, like Combulo uh, or Wall Theory or Weichi Tools. Those are just three off the top of my head that I know of that are pattern searches where it searches for opening patterns that have been played in professional games. And then you can study professional games and see what Josekis they used and what opening patterns to give yourself the most um, effective opening and the most efficient opening or the best opening pattern. Uh, and then you have to study all the ins and outs of that opening pattern. So for example, if I wanted to learn an opening really in depth, I would play that opening. Like for example, I played this opening for two years. I don't recommend doing it for two years. But I played this opening hundreds of times. I would say if you really want to learn an opening, play it for 100 games, and after every game, review it and try to improve it. And also look at 100 pro games that played this opening. And then see what Joseki choices they used. And then that way you can have a very good understanding of your opening pattern. So if you want to learn an opening, then you want to learn an opening pattern, you want to review 100 pro games, uh, play it 100 times in your own games, and learn the Josekis and study Josekis that go with your opening. And that way you have three things that you're studying and practicing with to learn an opening. And that would really help you improve your opening. 
And now we are opening with that specific opening. We'll be very spot on. <laughs> I haven't even played 100 games in total. Uh, yeah, that's the it's the most ideal way to learn an opening. So likely you could spend about two months with one opening, uh, and then use review 100 pro games. So what professional players do, like what they make the kids do, is they make the kids. This is a lot more effective and efficient time wise but it's not as realistic for Western players. Uh, and that is, they make kids memorize, I mean memorize, 100 professional games with their openings. And then once they memorize that one, they'll probably move on to another opening, memorize another 100 games, and I mean memorize, memorize, another 100 games with that opening. And they'll have the opening patterns memorized, and all the Josekis that go in that opening memorized. So... That's a very intense way to do it. But it's not as fun, and it's not as easy to do. But it's very efficient and very effective. So, I would say my advice if you wanted to learn an opening and have fun with it, then just play it for 100 games and look at 100 pro games. Quick question about the Q3 Arfuseki. Oh, Q3, R16. R Q3, R16. Fuseki or not. What are you drinking? What? This is an old pattern. This is a very common... Just a second. Yeah. Fuseki, sorry. Nowadays, I play with the star point because it's more flexible. But And this one's really straightforward. But this black pattern is... An opening, I played this opening for two years. Like, I know this opening a lot. Like, I know a lot of variations of this opening. Go away! Oh my gosh. How do I hang up? I'm just gonna mute it. <laughs> uh, it was a question about that. Was, or not. Oh, I'm drinking Kool-Aid. <laughs> my tongue's red. Uh, I'm drinking Kool-Aid. Or fruit punch, I guess. I'm drinking fruit punch. Okay, so... Um, this opening is just an old pattern. And I know a lot of variations of this pattern. But they've come up with even more, and I'm just like, this one's just too complicated. I like the star point now. I'm drinking fruit punch... And I rotate between Fruit Punch and Kool-Aid right now. It gets me more water. I had a whole conversation about my drinking and dietary habits on a stream a few days ago. <laughs> I already had a whole conversation. And then they said I lacked salt in my diet, so I went to McDonald's and got some freaking french fries. I have a very bad diet. <laughs> this, is, this is a very common thing with me. At least I'm not drinking, like, a lot of caffeine every day. I got pizza today. I got some frozen pizzas today, and I'm very happy about it. And then I spent a lot of money, and I'm like, oh my gosh, pizzas are expensive. A very nice diet changer. <laughs> Go to McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. I'm very happy. I got pizza today. How would you rate the Tengen? Oh my gosh. The Tengen opening? Don't worry. Don't even worry about it. The Tengen is like flipping a coin. The Tengen is like a 50-50 chance. It's really fun, but it's extremely hard to use and not ideal. But it's very, very big for fighting. So you play it if you're very confident in your fight and you want to have fun. Only living can play go. Well, you know what? If you guys want me to eat better, then you guys all get private lessons from me all at the same time, and I will eat at freaking low, like, high-end restaurants. I say Logan's. <laughs> Logan's is my high-end restaurant. Oh, my gosh. I will eat much healthier, and I will have healthier meals if you guys all get lessons and pay for it <laughs> because I can't afford to be healthy. Uh, yes. Tingen's too complicated and not ideal. That's why most pros don't play it. So, but uh, Tengen 
it's not impossible to play. It's not let it's impossible. It's just really difficult to use. Healthier frozen pizza. <laughs> That's sad. <laughs> I am a professional Go teacher, and by that I mean I make a poor living off of teaching Go. <laughs> At least I'm doing what I love. That's that's my thing. It's my silver lining. I don't have to go work some crappy job, factory job. I just have to slightly starve and walk places, and I get to do what I love for a living. So this is what I do for a living, guys. <laughs> I play Go and teach Go for a living. Uh, so I'm a professional Go teacher. I'm not a professional Go player, but I'm a professional Go teacher. Hello, Creakers. But it has its pros and cons. Yeah, it's this is my job. You're a sociologist. Hey, I like my career path. No, I am a Tudon amateur. I am a Tudon amateur. I am not a professional player. I am a professional teacher. What that means is I am not able to compete with professionals, but uh, I do make a living from teaching Go. So I'm still an amateur player. I wish I could be professional. <laughs> Two down, bro. <laughs> Two down, bro. To resume. Um, I've considered Baduk studies a lot. Uh, there's reasons I can't. Part of those reasons is mistakes I've made with credit cards in the past and I'm recovering from that. Once I recover from that, I'm actually wanting to, I'm actually, I actually do want to go to Baduk Studies in Korea and I want to go teach English overseas. Um, I teach online. I walk to the store to get groceries and food. <laughs> I walk to the store. Uh, I, me and Steven just played a game the other day and Steven kicked my butt. <laughs> Steven's much stronger than me. You're in Korea right now. That's cool. I've been to Korea. I went to Biba and stayed there for five months. And mostly I teach online. Yeah, you missed it. Sorry. Steven kicks my butt. Uh, but yeah, no, I want to go to Korea. I want to actually live stream in Korea and then come home for like the summer and then like visit family and stuff oh i love korean barbecue you've no idea i love korean barbecue i got fat off of korean barbecue oh my gosh <laughs> uh but i do want to go back to korea in the future and teach english and play go and study go and teach go and go it up I hate Korean barbecue so much. Oh my gosh, all the freaking time. Watch your weight. You better you better walk and exercise. Gonna gain a gut. I'm still losing my gut from. I got a gut two years ago, and I'm still trying to lose it. Freaking barbecue, man. It's so freaking good, but oh my gosh. Um, the scholarship is possible. But I have to also pay my bills, like my credit card bills. Flee the country. Oh my, that's a horrible idea. I, I want to, but that's a horrible idea. <laughs> Just flee the country. Screw my debt. All right, well, I'm going to call it quits, guys. It's been fun talking to you guys, but uh, I'm going to call it a night. Hopefully you guys... <laughs> Row over your boat. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the stream today. I had a lot of fun. Today was quite funny. I think today's stream was quite funny. But anyway, um, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to follow and subscribe. And check out my website if you ever want lessons. Seansgogogoop.com uh, <laughs> Clausius nearly set the house on fire for holy water. <laughs> yes, multiple times. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time.